my cat over there over my shoulder. Hey, Chip. So I'm here with you now on the floor of my spinning room to show you what I have in my spinning basket. You may be able to see this here. I have one of those little sewing baskets that you'll easily find at the thrift store. And I have it in a bunch of things. So I'm gonna pull one thing out at a time. So the first is something I don't use all that often. It is a pair of hand carters. This I got as a Christmas gift when I first learned um, to spin. Actually, you know, how I got into spinning is that my mother-in-law bought me a fleece and these and a drop spindle. And so this was one of the first tools I ever acquired for um, preparing fiber. Um, I don't use them often because the fiber I like to work with is fine wool and I prefer a worsted prep for those using my hand combs. Um, coincidentally, same brand as my wheel and the same finish, which is really cool. I think that Karen just kind of knew my vibe, so that is there. Also a handy dandy tool is a inexpensive kitchen scale. This is something I bought on Amazon. Um, it's really not cute. And I think one day I might like yarn bomb this thing here just to make it more adorable. Um, definitely useful for weighing out fiber to know about how much you're spinning on one bobbin so that you can spin an equal amount on the other to ply them together and get a uh, you know, a rough estimate of half and half for applying a two ply or four ply or whatever. So very essential for weighing out my fibers. Now, if you're just spinning from say a braid, it, for me personally, it's more accurate to unbraid all your fiber, fold it in half, and then at the halfway mark, um, work it apart there. I've had greater success in separating my fiber equally that way. All right, so here I have a random bag. Um, it's a great bag. I would recommend saving your favorite kind of shopping bag for holding onto fiber, keeping it clean and safe um, while you're not working on it. So um, typically what I'll do is I'll weigh out my fiber, I'll choose one pile to spin, and I'll separate physically the second pile for my other bobbin. And it's really helpful to keep that fiber separate. Um, you'll see here that I also have a nice decorative kind of wooden bowl where I keep my current fiber supply. So whatever is on my wheel right now, that I keep there. Um, and my cats don't mess with it, so that's nice. Here I have a larger bowl. You probably don't need as many bowls as I feel I do. Um, and this is one that I'll put on my scale when I'm weighing a, a volume of yarn that exceeds the surface area of my scale. I held on to the sleeves to my combs. They're very sharp and it's nice to know that you have something to cover them up. So those are in here. Let's see, I have an old fiber band I should toss. A um, crochet hook. I'm gonna put that back somewhere else it belongs. A crochet hook is a good substitute for an orifice uh, pulley through tool. I don't know what that's called. Um, my wheel comes with one, and my wheel has a place for it. So um, you'll see that it's bent. That's intentional. That helps you um, move into the hole on the side of the shaft, and then you'll pull it through. So I keep that at my wheel where I need it. Um, so there's only about three more things here in my tool chest. Actually, four. One of them is a rubber band, and I've had success with this, and I've had a failure with this. So my on my wheel can you see my wheel on my wheel i have a lazy cape built in it's not a lazy cape with tensioning um so i use the rubber band as tensioning and i'm just going to show you on the top but what i do is on the bottom side typically it might not be easier to see but i'll put the rubber band on the bottom side around the um the little indentations there so that the two bobbins spin closer together 
in speed than they typically would without that little bit of tension. So feel like give that a try if you think you need to, if you have a, a lazy Kate without tensioning. That I just store there in case I want to use that again. Okay, so another tool I have is something I bought on Etsy. It measures wraps per inch. So you're gonna see here that there's, I guess, an estimated width line of what fingering, sport, DK, worsted, and bulky is. I definitely don't go based on that, um, but it is nice to have that, and it tells you how many wraps per inch for each gauge yarn. Um, something that I see people do, they will wrap their yarn around this tool. When you wrap your yarn around it, you're either increasing or you're decreasing the twist when you wind it around. And so that can have an effect on the, the volume of space that your fiber takes up, that your yarn takes up. So what I do is um, I use this tool after I've wound my yarn onto my Knitty Knotty. This is a t maybe a $12 tool I bought on uh, maybe like paradisefiber.com. Kromsky makes a fancier one. It's probably $50 more. I just bought this because I needed it and I didn't want to spend the money on a nicer tool. It's okay. It's I, I think it measures two yards per wrap. Um, I trust that that's accurate because that's what I was told when I bought this. That's what the product details said. Um, so you wind your yarn onto this tool off your bobbin from your wheel. So you take it off the bobbin, you put it on this tool, and when you slide it off, you have a skein of yarn. When my yarn's on the Knitty Knotty, I tie the ends together, and I do at least two um, kind of, you know when you buy a skein of yarn, there's those strings that hold everything in place. You wanna do that. So I take that skein of yarn, and I then just lightly drape over this tool strands of my skein. So it's just dropped on top. It's easier because you don't have to fuss with your yarn. Um, what you're gonna find is that there's some finishing techniques to spinning yarn. You wanna, what I like to do, you can do whatever you want. There's many ways, you can read a book on it. You can probably find another YouTube video about how to um, finish your yarn. What I do is I, fin I fill a Pyrex bowl of lukewarm water and a little bit of wool wash and I submerge my newly finished yarn in that water with the wool wash, let it soak for a minute so that it really submerges and then you'll pull that out, just gently squeeze the water out, you don't want to like wring it, of course, you know that, and, um, and then I'll hang it to dry, sometimes over a chair, sometimes with a fan on it. I have an air purifier that kind of puts out air, so I set my chair up by my air purifier so that there's some air circulation around it to help it dry quicker. Sometimes I hang it over a doorknob, sometimes I hang it over the corner of a door. Um, I, I always set up a towel underneath it. I'll s gently squeeze out any excess water from that skein so it can dry faster. So after I have soaked and dried my yarn, that's when I turn to the tools of measuring my fiber. So that's when I'm gonna measure the wraps per inch by draping the fiber, or yarn rather, over this tool and finding that most accurate count with what I'm physically knitting with. And then I'll re-measure with my neat little quilters yardstick how many inches my skein has shrunken into. I'm gonna lay my skein flat on the floor and measure how many itch inches it stretches out to. So typically, um, you know, what is assuming 36 inches um, shrinks to about 30, 29 inches. It's a lot. So I think I, I threw out a number of 200 wraps. So 200. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, I'm thinking out loud math. Okay. So what I would do is I would, oh, I feel on the spot now. I don't even have a pen and paper. <laughs> Why is it so hard? Um, okay. So it's still 200 wraps around the knitting knotty. Two yards, 200 wraps. That's 400 yards. If you take 400 
and divide it by 36, and then you multiply it by 30, which is your actual length, then you're gonna get your accurate yardage, I think, unless I'm wrong. But that's how I do it. So these things are all in one place. Now I have separately, for some reason, next to it, other tools. Scissors. Spinning oil, machine, wheel, spinning wheel oil. Hand cream. This is so important. This is waxed linen thread. Now this is not advertised as spinning wheel drive bands. What came with my wheel was a more rustic linen thread and it gave you two, one to use and one to replace. I very quickly needed to replace my second band. I don't you know, when you're a beginner, you don't know what tensioning is right and you might over wind uh, your band so that it's a little too tight and it might slip and break. So I found myself in a situation where I'm excited to spin on a, on a project and I broke my only drive band. But I live in a art school college town where there are a lot of like higher end art supply stores. So I, I went to one of those, the closest one to me, and I found this book binding thread, basically. And I like this a lot. It was not cheap. I think I spent like 10 or $12, but I have used this um, maybe three or four times. I'm not the best knot tire. Sometimes my knots come undone. This is gonna last me at least two more years, if not longer. So this was a good investment. I'm really glad I bought this. And if you are new to spinning on a wheel, the only thing I would say go out and buy is extra drive bands. You're also probably gonna want a Nitty Knotty too, and that's like 12 bucks. So go ahead and get it. Probably already own a yardstick or another measuring tool, like a you know measuring tape, that would work too. And your wheel probably came with spinning oil. So those are the only things you need need need. Um, you don't need a fancy tool like this for measuring inches, of course. You can do that on any other measuring tool. Um, it's just that I wanted some fancy object in my position. So there's that. Okay, one more, two more. I have extra bobbins. I really don't even use them. I, I, I thought I needed them because I see other people have like bobbins full of fiber that aren't plied and finished. And I thought that that's something that I needed more. And I don't know, maybe I was like, I was shopping from a place of scarcity. I thought I didn't have the space I needed, so I bought more space. These retail at 20 bucks a piece. So I spent $60 on something that sits in a basket. Your wheel comes with, your Kromsky Minstrel comes with three bobbins. Um, because, I spin two, because I spin two ply, that's all I need. So if you're spinning three ply, you're gonna need probably a lazy cape and an extra bobbin, unless you're doing that Navajo ply. So I have three extra bobbins, and I have these cute little um, labels, card, little cards I can put on with some string. So this is where you're gonna to wanna, to, you know, label your finished yarn with the fiber content, the weight, the yardage, um, maybe how you prepared the fiber, whether it was combed or carded, um, those sort of details. I also put on the backside my name, number, and email address, or if I had a website, where to direct someone to my website, just so that everything is all there, because I made it. Um, you might even go into the detail of S-twist and Z-twist if you want to be that um, detailed in your explanation. So this is another great thing to have. Um, and that's it. That, that's what's in my spinning basket. Um, again, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, please leave them below in the comments box on this uh, video. And if you liked what you saw here today, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Taylor. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Taylor E. Owen. 
and I will see you next time. Have a great day.